It's the Big Rich Live on the Mike Radio Show here on YouTube. The real news and strong opinions given here. A platform to chop up game with the family, you dig? What's good, people? What's good, people? Big Rich Live. On the Mike Radio Show, my name is Big Rich, and we made it to the uh, end of the week. So this is a Saturday show. First, I need to tell, let you let you guys know. I need to let you guys know in and on a little secret. It ain't Saturday. I'm doing this the day before because I'm not going to be able to do it on Saturday. I have a track meet to shoot and a um, and family day for the Dueling Dragons to uh videotape so i won't i will not after being out in all that hot and heat and sun and all that i'm not going to want to come home and do the show so that's why i'm doing the show today so i'll just let you know that and it's not this is going to be a smaller show uh or or tiny show because you know how i get to running i get to run my mouth and stuff like that and and before i know it it's 30 45 minutes that went by but we only have two Two, two, I, I picked two questions out. So we got two subjects that we're going to talk about. And the first one is about Orenthal James. For those who don't know him, that's uh, OJ, OJ Simpson. He was just granted parole and a lot of people going ape shit. Okay. First, let me, let me give you my opinion of OJ. Fuck OJ. I curse. Sorry, that is what it is. But I say F OJ because OJ, when he was on top of his game, said F the black community. There is a famous quote of OJ, Orenthal James Simpson, saying, I'm not black, I'm OJ. Okay? I don't care. A lot of people, a lot of people that looks like me are mad because he, you know, he he dated exclusively white women and I, whatever, you know, it is what it is. You know, I mean, you know, you have a, a big push from a lot, a lot of people in the conscious community saying that that's wrong. You can't be pro black and, and lay white. That's, that's the saying. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I'm, I'm in a quandary. I understand where they're coming from, but I also know that in the past I dated plenty of women that were outside of my race and I didn't have an issue, but I came to my own, inner decision that I needed to be with uh, a black woman to better understand me. That was just all in my struggle as an African-American man. You know, now I know some people sit up there and say, you know, that, and I know it's going off on a tangent, but you guys have, have chopped back and forth and, you know, on Twitter and stuff like that about this subject and I know a lot of people say that somebody of another race can't understand you. I don't agree that they can't understand you. I don't agree that they can't empathize. I, I do understand. I do believe that they can never walk in your shoes so they can never get the full, the full sting of what it is to be a black man in this country, more, or more so in this world. But I don't, you know shit on anybody who dates white or dates, you know, Asian or Hispanic or whatever. I mean, you, you do what you want, want to do. But Orenthal James, OJ, you know, he pretty much shit on us when he was on top. And then when them folks was after his ass, he wanted to kumbaya with, with, with the brothers. You know, he wanted to get back in the family, going to church and talking in front of black people and all that type of stuff right there, you know. So that's how, you know, I feel. And, and I've said that on Tariq Nasheed's Twitter and, and a, a bunch of other people who have asked me the question of how I feel. You know, I feel fuck O.J. Simpson. However, however, I do believe that O.J. was railroaded this time. And I and those charges, they sound like something from Charles Manson. I mean, literally, literally, they sounded like they sounded, you know, armed robbery, kidnapping, threats, at, terroristic threats, all sorts. And I'm like, what? Now, if you look at the video, 
I mean, it's something out of, you know, the Godfather. He came in and said, don't let nobody move. Like, he was calling the shots. Don't let nobody, everybody lay down. You know, that type of stuff right there. So, I'm not saying that he was totally innocent, but the fact of the matter is the people who had the guns, the people who brought the guns, they, instead of being given light, lighter sentences or no sentences at all to, to roll over on or to testify against O.J., they should have got the, the most time. You know, and O.J. still, he still should have got time. It should have been O.J. Simpson, if you was going to convict him for that, because it's kind of hard not to convict him with the video. He should have done seven to ten. He should have got a seven to ten year stint and should have been out maybe four or five years ago. You, you follow what I'm saying? With well, good behavior, that type of stuff right there. But to give this man 33 years for stealing his own shit, what amounts to stealing his own shit back, it was just a problem. And I felt that the judge, you know, the, the, the judge of the case was in her feelings. And she felt that A, OJ did it, B, that he got away with it, and C, he wasn't capitulating enough or he wasn't remorseful enough to sit on his ass and shut up. So she was going to basically give him as much of the time that he would have gotten had he been convicted of the double homicide of the Goldman and, and, and Nicole, Nicole Brown. And I just felt that, you know, which it was just set up from the get go. You feel me? Now let's go back to the case of 95. I think it was 95 with OJ Simpson. I truly think that OJ did it. I, I really do. You know, I have no independent put it like this. This, this is what I say. This is what I say. I think OJ did it because I've been a police officer for 23 years and I see how things sort of lock in. But I understand why the vast majority of Caucasians feel that he did it and got away with it. And the vast majority of African-Americans feel that he was vindicated and he didn't do it. And I'll explain it to you this way. This is how I'll explain it to you. I'll explain it to you. White people, Caucasian people, by and large, and this is just generally speaking, you know, it's that bell curve theory, 10% this way, 10% that way, 80% is where the, where the majority of us live. So I would say the majority. So the majority could be 51%, you know what I'm saying? But the majority of Caucasian people in this country, in this nation, they have positive views of the police. They have positive interactions with the police. They feel that the police are there to protect and serve them keep the bad guys away but protect and serve them and they probably actually believe that any caucasian people that are doing crimes are arrested and prosecuted and the fact that so many are not prosecuted then that means they don't do any crimes but what they fail to realize is 70 percent of the crimes are done by caucasians they just don't you know i'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry let me back that up 70 percent of the Caucasians who are arrested are never charged. That That's FBI statistics. African-Americans on that end, by and large, the majority, and that could still be 51%, even though I think that's a lot higher than that, okay? They have overall negative experiences by the police in the justice system, and they see it over and over and over how the, the justice system from the police through the DAs, to the judges, through the parole board, the probation and parole boards and stuff like that, have thoroughly screwed people who look like them. So any little thing that come, that came out that was negative against the police and or the DA system, or the DAs that were, or the DA system, I said it right the first time, then they will automatically fall back to know the person and do it. He's being railroaded. Now, I understand, okay, I understand the power that we had, uh, and I say we had, you know, because I'm no longer a, a, a current police officer, but I understand the power that I had to affect an investigation or to affect an arrest or to an affect a conviction. A lot of people, I think the majority of people, I'm talking about overall, black, white, brown, red, yellow, whatever do not understand the type of power a police officer has to royally screw up your life and get you convicted. 
So I understand that. So when you see people like Mark Furman and just the piss poor way that the LAPD botched up the, the, the crime scene, the way the coroner, you know, just screwed up this and and just the incompetence of Darden and Clark, Eric Darden, Eric Darden, Michael Darden, I don't know, Darden and Marsha Clark, you know, sometimes you'd be like, well, shit, maybe he didn't do it. But then when you come back to then you'd be like, you did. So anyway, so regardless if he did it or not, he had enough money, prestige, and lawyers to, to make him beat the case, right? So that's it. But OJ couldn't sit his ass down. You know, he flaunting it. He put out a damn stupid ass book. What if I, if I did it or some stupid shit like that, rubbing his face into it. And then he wind up getting a judgment from the Goldman's of what? $31 million total, which he did not have. So basically all his memorabilia and all that type of stuff is gone, you know, and you know, Mr. Goldman is just going to, to stalk him, you know, everywhere he goes or, you know, it, it it's kind of it's kind of weird and sickening and sad, but it is what it is. So then he gets this case and he gets the book thrown at him. If you look at that case and I'm not talking, I'm not going to sit up here and say if it had been a white man or a white woman. I'm talking about anybody else other than. O.J. Simpson, Orenthal James system system Simpson. Damn. It wouldn't have went down that way. It damn, it just wouldn't. They wouldn't have stacked all the charges. It wouldn't have been 33 years. <clears throat> I'm not saying that it would have been a suspended sentence, but who knows? If it was a situation, look, I did this is what let's just say OJ Simpson did not go to jail. You know, Nicole Brown system Simpson and Mr. And, and Young Goldman never were murdered or anything like that, or they were murdered and somebody else was convicted. You know, he was never a suspect like that. Do you think that O.J. Simpson would have got 33 years? Do you think he would have even got convicted if he had a came and said, look, somebody broke into my stuff. You know, I found out that this one of my boys came and told me that my that this dude is selling my personal shit. And we went down there to see about it. I didn't know that these fools had no guns or no weapons. I came in. I was pissed off. I was stupid. Yes, I was stupid. I should have called the police. But they came up to me. I saw red people and come and stealing my shit that I work hard for. You know, I mean, he still might have been convicted. But again, do you think he would have got 33 years had he not had the past that he had? You feel me? So he had his hearing Thursday, which was yesterday. Actually, not yesterday. It's yesterday for me, but you're going to be seeing this on Saturday. So it's Thursday. And, you know, they released him. And um, or they said they was going to release him. So he has to just keep his nose clean to October 1st. He was a model citizen and he going to get straight paid because even though the judgment of 31 million was put down. Or set down by the civil court, they can't touch his retirement. So his retirement went into a trust for the seven years that he was locked up and that's twenty one thousand dollars a year so i think estimates is anywhere between 1.2 and 1.5 million dollars they're gonna have to put on his lap put on his books if you will as soon as he get out in october 1st so i say this if the state of nevada or any state has a certain criteria that you have to achieve to get parole to be eligible for parole and you not only meet that or, or meet that point, that goal, but you exceed it, you got no choice. And I think that's probably what happened because they wasn't sitting around here trying to let OJ funky ass out. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I can almost guarantee that they wasn't trying to, you know, oh, yeah, let, let's, let's get let's get OJ out. No, no, no. They would have loved to be able to keep him in for a couple years, a couple more years. But when you have something written in stone so this is what the 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 convict you know the prisoner has to do to achieve or to be eligible by this it would have been not a travesty but it would have been maybe something that was suable if that if that's a word 
you know, something that they could have litigated. But like, you know, he exceeded the stance. Everybody who came up that hit this benchmark was freed. While all of a sudden, he's not freed. But you know what the wild thing, this is another thing that's wild. I think it was the root.com, and, and I really, I really got pissed off and I went in on them. They had posted, <clears throat> I don't know if it was them that did the story, but they posted it. You know, I don't know if it was their reporters and all that type, but it was OJ. OJ was caught masturbating in his cell, you know, let's just say last week or some some stupid shit like that, right? And I and I was like, and this, and and and, and I put down, and I was like, and this is news because, huh? Why is why is it this even put in? Who gives a shit? Shit, I masturbate occasionally. Any man who says that they don't masturbate is full of shit. Either either they get more stuff than a young person can stand, or they just too old and it don't work. You feel me? But if you got a manly testosterone bone in your body you have so again you know you ask yourself okay is this just gossip or is this something trying to it's no jury pool but trying to sway the promotion promotion uh, promotion the parole board in maybe saying nah well you know we we found this out what's going on with this which that is not germane to what the issue is it's it's just it's just ridiculous. It really is. So his lawyer was asked, well, what do you think he's gonna do? And he was like, he going to, you know, I think that my client is gonna lay low, live a quiet life. That's what that's what OJ need to need to. That's what he needs to lead. He really does. Now you know, hey, OJ still OJ. He gonna get him a fine young thing. Most likely she gonna be white. You know, or or, or or Hispanic, you know, light skin, black, something like that. She's going to be in her late 20s, early 30s, and this fool 70 years old. But I'm telling you, this is what's going to happen. But he needs to, you know, get his paper, and he need to chill out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know he want to play golf and stuff like that. Them folks ain't going to let you in any golf, any private golf courses, and you really don't want to go to a – public golf course because then you're gonna have to deal with 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 all the fools so i don't know what he's gonna do you know he, he's on parole so i mean some people were telling me in the twitter and my twitter t- thread that he needs to leave the country well you got to remember he's gonna be on parole until he dies you know what i'm saying when you're on parole and probation do you still got that time head uh, you still got that time hanging over you. So if he go out and do something stupid, they're going to snatch him up and put his ass right back in there for the rest of his time. So it's not like, you know, he has that he's going to be free to go and that's it. No, they're going to keep tabs on him. And there's going, there is going to be people who really want him to go back to jail. So they're going to be keeping a straight eye on him. So I don't envy the man. I really don't, you know, um, Hey, you know, you did what you were supposed to do. You got or you getting out and stuff like that. So I can't shit on you that that much. But I'm not going to sit up here and, and have any type of joy, you know, for this man. If I have any positive thoughts at all, it is just it is that in this case, in this case, in this portion of this case, the justice system worked like it was supposed to work. And what I mean by that, and I'll leave it at that, I'll leave it at this is this was the bar, this was the goal that you had to achieve, and he achieved it, and he surpassed it, therefore he was paroled. That's how it was supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? White, black, brown, you know, whatever. Humpback, whatever. So in that case, I can find some type of positive out of that. But as far as sitting around here, jumping in joy because OJ getting out, I'm not the one. I'm, I'm just not the one. So the last thing I'll talk about, and, and, and I'm really getting tired of talking about it, but I, I said before that I have a, a responsibility because I know things. Um, let me hold on one second. I, we're going to go. Let me see. Uh, 
Stupid bitch. Okay. Um, somebody sent me this. Uh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Here it is. Right here. Got it. Baltimore. You know, there's certain there there's certain agencies that I'm not gonna say need to be disbanded because because you can't do that. You can't disband disband or disband. There is disband. <laughs> you know, NYPD, LAPD, CPD. You know, uh, Ch- you know, which is Chicago PD, Boston PD, Miami. They just too, you know, it just be anarchy. But these agencies, and I, I'm picking on large agencies because I know small agencies are probably a lot of times worse, right? But these agencies really need to be taken over and mandated by the federal government, you know. And the federal government, I understand. I know a lot of people shaking their hand, rich the federal government fucked up too. And I and, and I I do understand that. But you need to have some type of maybe an FBI, you know, remember years ago after 9-11, they had home sent home, they made the Department of Homeland Security. We never had a department before, never had a need for it. I think that there should be a new federal agency to oversees policing in the United States. Everybody takes their direction from them as far as training, as far as policies and stuff like that. So it don't make a difference. So you, so let's just say you and my old stomping ground, the tri-state area, the tri-state area is New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, right? Or some people say New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Okay. Whichever. You can go from New York to New Jersey to Connecticut and run into three, do the same thing and have three different outcomes. You know, and I understand states' rights, and I understand every state wants to have their individualities and stuff like that, and that's true. You could have your individualities the way you cut your grass. You know, you have individual um, uh, individualities or what your state flower is, what your state fruit is, whatever. But as far as law enforcement, it all should be the same so you know exactly what the heck is going on. But this here, Baltimore, again, we just finished the Freddie Gray state and i don't give a damn what anybody says and i don't care how bad freddie gray may have or may have not been in his past they killed this man didn't do it deliberately i'm not saying that there wasn't a malicious intent you know to do death to him but there was intent to do harm to him and all of them got away you know, it was it, it was it was a backlash. It was a backlash. You had an African American DA who tried to do the right thing and charge these race soldiers, even though there was two blacks, charged them with what they needed to be charged with, and she got hit, blindsided by this blue wall. So I digress. But now you have this come out. In Baltimore police. So I'm going to read this. It says Baltimore police have launched an investigation after body cam footage emerged, allegedly showing an officer planting drugs released by the public defender's office. The foot, the footage film in January shows an officer placing a bag in a can, which lying in it, which was lying in a lot filled of trash. Two fellow officers are seen witnessing the action before they leave the lot. Upon leaving, the audio begins with the officer identified Identified as the public defend, identified by the public defender as Richard uh, Penhero, saying, "I'm going to go check before re-entering the lot where he discovered the previously planted drugs." The audio kicks in 30 seconds after the video begins, indicating that the officer did not switch off the camera and t- or did not switch on the camera until after he had left the yard the first time. After 30 seconds of video, excuse me, after 30 seconds of video is automatically saved in the body cam prior to the device being activated with audio omitted. The statement from the public defender, they claim Penhero is a um, is a witness in 53 active cases. The cases in which the video is being is being used is evidence was dropped with no decision made on the others. We have long. This is a quote. We have long supported the use of police body cameras to help identify policeman conduct. 
but such footage is meaningless if prosecutors continue to rely on these officers, especially if they do if they do so without the close disclosing their bad acts. This is Debbie Katz Levy, head of the Baltimore Public Defender's Special Litigation Section. Speaking to the Baltimore Sun, Police Department spokesman T.J. Smith said an internal investigation has been launched into the incident. And I can report that this officer has been suspended, suspended with pay. You know how, how that goes. He should be fired and should be prosecuted. But this is, this, this is what people have said to me, and this is what I have tried to teach my recruits when I was in, when I was in charge of training, you know, in, in a field training unit. When you have one bad apple and is, and is nothing done with it, if you put one bad apple in a barrel, it will affect the other bad apples. And this is another thing that I've learned. We've had people and the PD that has been that have been fired for misconduct, right? And then you sit around and you think you were like, hold on, hold on. This ain't the only person, or the this ain't the only person that's done this misconduct. This person did not design this system of misconduct. This person was taught, was shown how to do this. So this guy here, Pahero, Pen, Pen, Panhero. He's not the first dirty cop on in this unit. Look at him. I mean, he looks young. He looks like he's a young Caucasian male. He didn't just decide to plant evidence. He was taught by a veteran officer somewhere down the line, this is how you do it. And what bothers me about this blue wall of silence is you got two other officers sat there and watched him do this did not say a thing. So what that tells me is not only was they all complicit in this, but odds are that they might have done this before themselves. And I don't give a damn if one of them was African-American. I don't care. I don't care. When you talk about this, type, so that's 53 cases. So if you add this case, that's 54 defendants that may or may not have been wrongfully convicted or at least if they haven't gone to, 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 to jail or not to jail, if they haven't gone to trial, have at least may or may not have been arrested wrongfully. How do you do this? How do you, I mean, really, really and truly, how do you lay up and uh, lay up in your bed? How do you sleep at night when you know that you plan an effort evidence on somebody, whether you believe that the person is dirty or not, do your freaking job and find something on this person. And if you're not smart enough or quick enough or know, know enough is still smart enough to catch them, hey, that is what it is. I'm telling you, my first six, seven years of the police force used to try to chase everybody. Used to run. Yes, I used to run. I know a lot of people like, man, you're fat ass. No, I, I, hey, one of these days I'm going to put a picture. I, I got to cross out you know block out my my other squad members because they haven't given me permission to be on the show but one of these days i'm going to show you how skinny and and just straight in shape i was you know and my first half of my career i was a motherfucker i'm telling you anyway i used to chase then after a while i started i'm like dude i'm gonna do my job but i'm not gonna chase you wrongfully and cause a cause a wreck and kill somebody or maim somebody an innocent person because my ego got in the way or i'm not going to chase you up there and get you know blow out of knee blow out of the achilles get hit by a car get hit by a train this type of stuff right to chase after your funky ass no i catch you because i know who y'all i catch you eventually i have the evidence and if i got your name if i know your name and your date of birth like you giving me your ID and then you found out you got a warrant. You took off. Okay, that's cool. I'm going to try to find you. I'm going to use the dogs and try to find you and all that. But that's fine. I'm Right after that, if I can't find you, I'm going to go back to my office or in my patrol car at that particular time. I'm going to pump out a warrant, find me a judge to find it. And eventually, your ass is going to be caught. I say that to say this. We don't know 
how deep this goes. We don't know if they have quotas because a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of specialized units have quotas because what that is, I'm not going to sit up there and say the only reason they have quotas is to fill up the, tr- the prisons and all that stuff. Because, I mean, we, you know, I'm not saying that police is the smartest people and in, in, t- to think that far ahead. But you justify, you need to justify your existence from the squad on down. You need to justify like, okay, if, if, if I'm on, let's say DED, that's the, the Drug Enforcement Division, right? And I'm doing everything by the book. And if, if if I don't see it, I don't don't arrest. If I can't put it in somebody's hand or in somebody's location, I don't make an arrest. Okay, I made three arrests this month. But everybody else on the squad has made 40 arrests, which which most of them were planted or or circum you know circumstance where I just articulated it right. But you know you ain't see shit. Basically, you just lied. Who's going to who's going to be the one to get booted? Me or them? Me. So a lot of times I do things, and this is not me. I'm talking if I'm that one officer. Sometimes you get caught up into that and you just, hey, man, it's it's cool. It's cool. Look, he was dirty. You know he dirty. You know he dirty. They just finished saying that he was dirty. So we didn't find it. That's fine. We'll put some shit on him and get his ass the hell out of here. It will help the community. That type of shit. So... I, it's disgusting. You know, I said on Twitter that, you know, all of his cases, all of his cases should be dismissed immediately. He should be fired and he should be brought up on charges. Now, you in you in Baltimore, you know, depending on where they get Baltimore City and you think about it in Baltimore. This is this is how you get around shit. When you know you in a predominantly African American city, right? And you understand that the city want to make an example of you because they can't stand you and your organization. What you do is you have a bench trial. So you have a bench trial. And the wild thing is, a lot of people was tripping and all of that type of stuff about what I said earlier about the Freddie Gray cases. People don't, people, a lot of people don't know the judge was black. That wasn't a white judge that dismissed those cases. That wasn't a white judge. That was a black judge. The biggest proponents of white supremacy are black people. Do not, do not get it twisted because you cannot. It's just like if we go back to Bible times, and you know, I don't, I'm not a Bible thumper, but I'm just saying. When Pharaoh set loose the Jews, right? It was because Moses did a whole lot, but it was because the Jews was rebelling against them. So when you have a situation where you no longer have control, that's when you got to capitulate. You got to push them out. You got to move them. So if African-Americans, if Latin Americans, if black and brown people were not to delve into it, would not believe it, would not follow it, be like, hell no, you're not better than me. It'd be bloody. It'd be hard. But white supremacy would not be able to survive. The foundation would crack. But when you have people that sit up there and say, oh, well, I'm going to do like. Actually, I am. I actually am. No, 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 no. Forget it. Forget it. I, I'm just I'm just not going to put them on blast like that. But anyway, when you have situations like this, this is what I said earlier needs to happen. That doesn't mean that he's going to get convicted. It really doesn't. He'll probably do the same thing that the other cops did. Get a bench trial. Get a judge that is sympathetic to the police officers and either he'll dispense it or whatever. I do feel, I do believe that he's probably going to lose his job. I really do because it's kind of hard, you know, cause it's like, well, dude, what, what was you, what was in that baggie? Cause this is the deal. This is the deal. The person was arrested. Okay. Not only was the person that he planted 
the 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 uh the drugs near was arrested but then he had to take the drugs and put the drugs in the evidence so there is a trail you can't even say well shit i just threw that away you know ain't no evidence no 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 the evidence is in is in lockup the evidence is attached to that particular person's jacket so I do believe that he's going to lose his job. I don't know if he's going to face charges. I'd be very shocked if he keeps his job. And this is not a, you know, oh, well, you know, somebody shot, you know, like like the Mike Brown and, and, and stuff, and then Fernando Castile and, and, and Alton Sterling and, and, and the, the, the uh, Eric Garner. I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying, when you – see stuff like that it is kind of hard it truly is kind of hard to maintain you to keep you around when you have been shown to be dirty you feel me you feel me so that is what it is um thanks for giving me this time again see look it's it's almost 35 minutes long see i told you i told you i get into this ripping and running and i try to get everything because everything that i say on these shows i've already said on twitter throughout the week you know what i'm saying if you guys follow my twitter it should be you know on on the description down there but i put it again it's at dark shadow media like share and subscribe this video please each one teach one that's what we do put like share and subscribe to this channel Share this video, please, if you got a minute, if you if you feel like it. Share this to your social media platforms so I can keep the word going, so we can keep the knowledge rolling, so we can chop up game back and forth, and we can build this. You know what I'm saying? The new media, that's what we're trying to do. You know, I, I got my little corner pocket, you know, and I'm trying to – build it up and keep it moving and i can't do it without you guys you guys come in and show me straight love and i show appreciate it thanks a lot so in the meantime in between time stay safe stay blessed stay woke and to my wife stay conscious peace i'm out of here <laughs>